Hi everyone! In this video, I'll show you how I shot and edited my most recent portrait with a little sneak peek of my studio. As you can see, I have one light set up with a large softbox on the model's right side as well as a natural window light coming in. And on her left side is a round silver reflector. My camera is set up on manual mode, aperture at f4, shutter speed 1 over 200 and ISO at 250. To edit my image I open up in Photoshop, I press Ctrl J to duplicate it and the first thing I like to do is to crop my image. I normally have it at 8x10 and the first step is to clean up all the blemishes on her skin. And I do that by alternating between three different tools. I normally use the spot healing tool, the clone tool and the patch tool to clean up blemishes. Now that I've completed removing all the blemishes on her skin, I will rename this layer Skin and I'll create a new layer as I want to fix the background. Just do a bit of a clean up on the backdrop. Again, I will use the same tools that I've used on the skin and I'll just start editing. I now want to increase the contrast on the image and I'll do that by going to adjustment layers and adding a new levels adjustment layer just to give it a bit of more depth. Yep, that's looking good. I'll now go to my actions panel and I will choose the frequency separation action which is the most essential part of my editing process. This action has all the steps um, that are required to create frequency separation already set up. If you want to see the tutorial on how to create it, I will provide the link above. So first of all, I will start working on the texture layer. And I do that by choosing the clone tool and adjust my opacity as appropriate. And if you're like me and find it always difficult to remember the steps to creating frequency separation, then definitely click on the link that I've provided because I've created a video that specifically teaches you how to create frequency separation in very simple and easy ways. So I highly recommend that you check it out. I now will work on the color layer which is the low frequency layer and I'll do that by selecting the lasso tool and draw a selection around the areas that I want to blur out. I'll go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur and I will reduce the radius all the way down and slightly bring it up until I see that the texture has been blurred out. I like it to look soft and smooth. I'll just leave it at 15 and hit OK. OK, so I'll take a look at before and after. Yeah, that's looking really good. So now I'll draw more selections around other areas. And to create a shortcut of what I just created before, by pressing Ctrl F, which will immediately apply the previous effect. 
This really saves me a lot of time from having to go and redo all the steps all over again. So I'm just going back to my high frequency layer and I'm just going to do further adjustments on some of the areas that I feel needed some extra tweaking. So I'm now going to create a layer mask on my frequency separation layers or folder. And the reason for doing that is because I want to reduce some of the effects that I have created through frequency separation. So basically just reduce the opacity and the strength of those effects. I'll now start working on the paint layer by choosing a soft round brush, reduce the opacity to 20% and the flow to 10%. I'll start by sampling the areas that I'd like to paint over so that the color can be very consistent throughout the skin areas. This particular step is very effective as it blends in the overall tones of the skin very smoothly. I'll now create a new layer. I'll go to Edit, Fill, leave it at 50% grey and hit OK. Go to Blending Mode Panel and choose Overlay. As this is going to be the Dodge and Burn layer, I will select the Dodge tool, make sure it's on black, and go to the Range drop-down menu and select Highlights. And now reduce the exposure to 2% and start painting over all of the highlighted areas.
Now that I've completed enhancing the highlights, I will switch to the burn tool. I'll go down to the range drop down menu and choose shadows and I'll reduce the exposure to 5% for now. And I'll start painting over all of the shadowed areas. I'll create a layer mask only because I want to reduce some of the effects on her skin. I just feel that it's a bit too much and I don't like the way it looks. So I'm just going to reduce some of the effects. Okay, so what I'm going to do is duplicate this layer, my dodge and burn layer, just because I want to enhance it more, not by working on the same layer, but by duplicating it, what it does is it actually recreates the same um, effects that I've worked on on the previous layer and it enhances it even more. So again, I'm on the layer mask and I'm just reducing some of the effects um, of the dodge and burn layer as it just looks a bit too heavy on some areas. So I'm just going to reduce it just a little bit. I'll now create a curves adjustment layer and I will reduce the contrast on that so that I'll call it shadows and that's where I'm going to be working on and create another one and increase that just a little bit and invert the mask and call that highlights. Now go on the shadows layer, reduce the opacity and the flow and choose a white brush. Now paint over all of the shadow area. So it's basically like the dodge and burn effect that we used earlier. The reason why I create these two um, curves layers is because I just like to add more contrast to my image and you know give it a little bit of that HDR look that we all like um, and also the good thing about it is that you can always reduce the opacity of it and the strength but that's completely optional it's a personal choice I mean if you've already created a dodge and burn layer then you're really not required to create um, two new curve layers for the shadows and highlights and um, just having the dodge, uh, dodge and burn layer on its own is more than enough and it does the job just as good. So yeah, because it is um, quite time consuming and I only add it when I feel like there's a need to just give my image that extra effect.
Okay, so now I'm happy with the way it looks. And the next step is to add textures to my image. And I'm going to open up a folder of textures that I've created um, recently. And I will be selling these very soon. So keep an eye. I will add them to my store on my website and on YouTube as well. But I will be posting more notifications on that once it's all completed. Okay, so I am adding three different textures. I like to always add more than one. And I will put them all in one folder. And I will resize them to fit my canvas. Okay, so now I'm going to change the blending mode for each of the textures. Once that's done, I'm going to reduce opacity and just play around with how strong I want it to look and which one I want to stand out more. I've created a layer mask so that I can start painting off all the areas that I want the texture to be removed from. And I always remove all the texture of the skin. But I do leave a bit of texture on the clothes as I like it to blend in with the background. I also reduce the opacity of my brush as I go and just to gauge out how it's going to look. I don't like it to look too blended in as in the texture on the clothes with the background. I do like my subject to stand out from the background but at the same time I like to give it that nice texturized look. Now to see which areas I've removed the texture off, I press the backslash button and what that does, it highlights all the areas that the effects have been removed from. It really just makes your job easier and um, you know more precise. And to remove the highlights, just click again on the backslash button and that removes it. So now I'm just readjusting my textures and the opacity on each of them. And I'm going to change the color of the last one as I just don't like it looking too orangey and giving it that really warm look. So I'm just going to reduce the saturation on that and make it black and white. So I'm not liking the color of the background and I want to change that by adding a hue saturation adjustment layer. I just want to reduce the warmness of it and give it a cooler tone. So I'm going to change the blending mode and I'm going to start to brush over it just the background area and not go on the subject. I'll change the blending mode again and reduce the opacity and I'll go back to my texture layers and just reduce the opacity and change blending mode just to see what I like and what I'm happy with. So I'm going to add another texture. I just feel like the image needs more work on the background. And just to give it that rustic look. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, there's no harm in trying. So changing the blending mode and the opacity, see what works, see what looks good. It's really a personal choice on how you want your image to look and feel. I'm going to create a stamp visible layer 
just above the curves layers and I'm going to go to images, adjustments, shadows and highlights and this is where I get to really bring out the details of both the shadows and the highlights. And it's a more advanced technique as it allows you to adjust and tweak the strength of each of those elements. So I've just created a hue and saturation adjustment layer as I want to decrease the saturation of the image. Yeah, that's looking nice and just change the opacity. Yeah, that's looking good. And just continue to do further adjustments as I go. I'll now create a color balance adjustment layer and this is where I get to change the overall tones of my image. So what this basically does is it controls the intensity of the colors, especially in the shadows and the highlights, and it just sets out the mood for the portrait. So now I'm going to add a gradient fill layer because I want to create a vignette effect um, on the edges of my image, which would give the image a more of a dramatic feel and a suspenseful overall look I guess. So I'm um, making sure that it's on radial and what you can do is press inside the image and move it. Changing the blending mode and the opacity as I don't want it to be too visible and with a soft round brush, black brush, I'm going to paint over my subject as I want to remove the vignette of my subject and just leave it on the edges of my portrait. And here I'm just adding a new curves layer as I want to enhance the shadows on the subject. I usually just do that um, towards the end of my editing process where I just add extra adjustment layers and you know just tweak little things that I feel that need a bit of extra work. Okay, so there's one thing that's really bothering me, which is this string that's sticking out of her hat. It's just looking really odd sitting by itself. So I've created a duplicate by copying and pasting it and attaching it next to the first one. And just making it look natural as if it was already there to begin with. Okay, that's definitely looking better. So now I'll create a stamp visible layer and it's a sharpen layer. That's where I get to sharpen my image. I go to filter, sharpen, smart sharpen. And I move the sliders and adjust them as desired. I'm going to create another color balance adjustment layer only because I feel that I want to enhance the overall tones of the image and want to give it a more cooler overall tones. Alright, so let's take a look at the image before all the edits and after. Let's take a closer look before 
after. Alright guys, so this concludes my tutorial for today. I really hope you have enjoyed watching. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe and like and hit the bell for more notifications. See you next time. Bye.